Hey everyone, this is Matt with the Northern Angler here in Traverse City, Michigan. This morning we're out on the Boardman River. It's a little buggy, it's a little muggy, and it feels like it's time to do some hopper fishing. Today we got three tips to improve your hopper fishing for this summer. First off, you gotta have the right setup. I really like a five weight. It really handles those big, large, air resistant flies well. Sometimes it's fun to use a three on smaller streams, but a five is probably the right choice overall for hopper fishing. You can even handle dropper setups. More importantly than the rod or the line though is the leader. I see a lot of people using the wrong leader, too long, too light. Um, you gotta have something that can turn over these big air resistant flies. That's why I like a seven and a half foot 3x leader as my base. Now that's, I say base because I build off of that, okay? I, I like to sometimes lighten it up. You know, if, if, if it's a really quiet section of water that's really soft, sometimes going down a tippet size can really get the attention of the fish or not spook them, I mean there. So know that a base leader is a, a good idea because leaders, remember, leaders and tippet give you a modular system. A lot of times right now, I have 5X right off my hopper here and I'm running a dropper. So make sure you have something stout enough and otherwise you're just not gonna be able to hit your spots. Accuracy is more important than most people think in hopper fishing. Okay, number two is add some motion. You know, we have all these rubber legs on these flies. A lot of times they move on their own, more subtle than we realize. And in, again, in quiet water, don't always add a lot of motion, but when we get some riffles, first thing you can do is add a splat, you know, kind of the Hank Patterson throwdown, we'll call it. And that'll really get fish's attention. It works their lateral line system, says, hey, something may have fallen in and I can get some grub. Number two is don't be afraid to lift the rod tip and skate your fly. You know, especially at the end of your drift, I can't believe how many fish will rock it out of the water and just go airborne trying to eat that thing because it looks like it's trying to get away, right? It gives it that prey image that fish crave, all right? So splat down, dance it, and don't even be afraid to add a little strip here or there. Remember, if, if, what if you fell in the water? You're gonna start swimming, right? You're gonna start trying to get away. These terrestrial insects do try and swim. Okay, so don't be afraid to add some motion to your fly. Last thing we're gonna add in here for number three, we're going to number three here, is don't be afraid to fish downstream. A lot of people, you know, forever have just said, you have to fish straight upstream, dead drift it. It's a lot of work, number one. <laughs> Maybe I'm lazy in the summer. But I think with a downstream presentation and working on what's called stack mending, which is feeding line out downstream, without imparting too much motion on the flyer. We're gonna showcase that in a second. That can allow you to feed it into these nooks and crannies where fish will sit on a sunny day. They'll sit right in that cut bank, right up against the grass. And sometimes it's tough to get around that with an upstream presentation. You have to throw a curve a lot of times. You have to work um, a little bit harder. So don't be afraid to fish downstream. If you want to get good at fishing downstream, you're going to have to get used to a little bit more slack out on the water than you might normally have. You don't want to cast all of it. If you cast it, you're just going to end up dragging your fly from the get-go. What we're doing here is feeding line out with a vertical motion of the rod tip. Now I'm also feeding line up with my left hand, that's my control hand, up to my right index finger. That right index finger allows me to choose if exactly how much line I'm letting out and maintains tension in between those up and down movements. You gotta have some tension, otherwise when a fish eats, you're not gonna be ready to set the hook. Hope you get out on the river soon. We hope to see you in the shop or on the river. This is Matt with Northern Angler. I'll catch you later.